An elected official in Pennsylvania is coming under fire after she accused her local police department of racism and political corruption following her arrest. But now the police department is firing back after body cam video was shown at a local city council meeting allegedly disputing those claims. And our police department is unwavering in its commitment to fairness, to respect and the dignity and dignified treatment of all individuals. I want to stress that racial, political and socioeconomic bias have no place in law enforcement and did not influence the handling of this specific incident. The allegations stem from a July 2023 incident where Easton City Councilwoman Taiba Sultana was arrested on allegations of domestic assault after she was accused of hitting, punching, and headbutting her 19-year-old son. Body cam video from the 2023 incident shows officers arriving outside of Sultana's home. The officers can be seen speaking with Sultana's son, whose face has been blurred out from the video. The 19-year-old told police the incident happened after an argument that later turned physical. What's the deal? Who you in an argument with? Okay. Um, I normally would never call police my mom, but it was the guy who was what? The kid pulled Okay. But I mean, this is an habit for a while. It just gets physical every time. What happened? Um, it, was, uh, it, was, it was so small. It was arguing about it. Um, I think I picked something up and cleaned something up. And it just escalated so quick, I didn't even realize it. Next thing you know, she's like punching and slapping my face. And like, I don't know what the f is happening. How old are you? I just turned 19. Did, she, did you hit your mom back at all? Oh, no. No. All right. She's not injured or anything? No. I see you got some scratches on your face. Are you injured anywhere else? No. She, like, grabbed my hair and, like, kept hitting me my head against her head, telling me to hit her. Okay. I did it obviously. I'm not that stupid. Um, okay. What, she's okay. Uh, what about this? Yeah, she uh, is. That, how'd that happen? Alright. Anything else? Did she punch you or anything? Yeah, in my stomach. And my nose. It was bleeding a little bit, but I cleaned it up. Do you need an ambulance? Uh, or did it, I don't know. Did anybody ask? Sure. Okay. Do you need an ambulance or anything? Do you need to be checked out? No? Okay. Sultana's son said the alleged violence has been an ongoing issue for him and his siblings for years. The officer then goes inside the home to get the councilwoman's account of what happened. It was just over the, because he said, don't touch my stuff. And I was like, if this is your touch stuff, just move your stuff out and you can leave. And it was over all the wires and everything. He pushed me, I pushed him. I have no long nails, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was mad, you know, of course I don't want my... Did you head, head bottom or anything? What is that? Did you headbutt him? He said that you grabbed his head and you smashed your head into his. No, not grab. Okay. Not grab. What'd you do? We were having a fight over by that. And so I was trying to put his, so the stuff is outside. So I was trying to pull the wires out and he was trying to pull the wires out. And it was like boom, 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 both, both sides. Yes, yeah, smack head. The smack head, yeah. Not like. Are you injured at all? No, just some scratch, yeah. Like where? I don't know. Very, very minor. Yeah. Okay. The officers later are seen going back outside to discuss placing the councilwoman under arrest. So I talked to him. I don't know what you got from him so far. He's saying that she attacked him, basically. Yeah. And that she grabbed him by his head and smashed her head into his, scratched him in the face, and he's got visible injury. She's going to have to get 15. I don't say it. it doesn't matter whether he wants to press charges or not. It's, it's domestic violence. He's over 18. She's not disciplining him. He's an adult. And, um, yeah, I don't, I don't see any other way around it. Before we do anything, um, just because she is a council member, I'm going to call um, Lieutenant Alonzo quick and see. Just give him a heads up. And uh, so just hang tight for a minute and uh, we'll see what they say. After getting off the phone with his lieutenant, the officer then takes photos of the 19-year-old's injuries, then asks the teen again to walk him through what happened. I just want to ask him one other thing. Um, one last thing, sir. Sorry, I keep getting pulled away. Did, uh, when this uh, altercation occurred in the basement, did, um, was anybody else present or was it just you and your mom? It was just, uh, I heard, I mean, I was right there. I heard yelling. And then, like, my mom, like, me and my sister were, like, standing right there, like, trying to listen to the conversation, what was happening. Yeah. But, yeah, but we didn't even, like, see anything. Yeah. And I, I mean, I saw from the upstairs window, and she was, like, just to 
picking you up and yeah. Like, yeah, she was kicking him up in the back. Or like trying to make him leave the house. Yeah, and then I guess she was like pushing his stuff out and throwing his stuff Because I mean, I was like looking for nothing like that. Yeah. So, um, and then, and I just see like his, his stuff being thrown out and then like, she was about to throw out, I guess his computer, like it's like 200,000, 2,000. Yeah. So, like, he grabbed and he just put it outside himself. And then he just went out. Was that before or after the... This was after, after the... Uh, uh, so the physical assault happened first and then she started throwing your stuff outside? Yeah. Got it. Um, would you be willing to write a written statement for us about what occurred? All right, let's grab him one of them and uh, grab him the victim's rights form. Yep. And we'll give him that first, and then uh, 36 is on his way here. Then the officer informed Sultana's son that they will be placing his mom under arrest. I'm just going to be sh straight up honest with you. Um, it's domestic violence in Pennsylvania when somebody's injured, and we determine that there's an arrest, but we, we have to make an arrest. So, um, it's looking like most likely we're going to be arresting your mom for simple assault and harassment. It's just a misdemeanor, but that's what we're required to do by, by law, basically, and policy. The teen is later seen giving a written statement. Minutes later, the officer goes back inside the home to take photos of any potential visible injuries to the councilwoman. After police then inform Sultana due to Pennsylvania law, she will be placed under arrest. Typically, what happens is we're, we're going to take you down to the station. The officer's going to, uh, it, it'll be simple assault and harassment. Simple assault's a misdemeanor the second degree. It's a, a in the middle of the road misdemeanor. Um, once he completes the charges, we'll take you up to, depending on the time, if it's after 4 o'clock, we'll take you to central booking. Um, you'll see a judge uh, probably within the hour. Uh, if it's before 4 o'clock, I don't know the time right now. It's about 3.30. Okay, probably not going to make it. So it'll probably be CBC. Um, you'll see it, uh, whoever the night duty judge is. Then, then they'll review your charges and then they'll set bail. But when the officer informs the councilwoman she might not be able to return to her home where her son still resides after getting bailed out, she stands firm that her son should leave. A part of those bail conditions, uh, and it's always up to the judge, but our, for any kind of domestic violence incident, is that you're not going to be able to return to the home um, and be around that person. So um, we are going to explain to him how to apply for a PFA also, but... Um, I, and the judge is going to explain this to you, but it will be part of your bail conditions that you'll be able to be around him. Um, so that means I have to leave? Yes, you would have to leave. Why not him? Because well, that's, that's going to be a judge. A judge will make that decision. He's telling you what typically happens in yeah. these situations, but because, again... Um, because this is the problem. Like, I've been asking him to leave, mm -hmm. like, move out. Yeah. And um, I actually offer financial help, too, like... And I put him, uh, he actually went to the NCC and I applied for his um, the, the on-campus program, but he wasn't able to make up, uh, make everything up and then uh, there were like four thousand dollar charges and then they told him he can stay on campus. So I told him like I can apply for campus and then you can study and you can live on campus. Right. And all of that, what's going to happen when you go in and you see the judge? He's going to lay everything out. And again, a lot of things get put in place because of the name. Like, this is an assault, but it also falls under the domestic violence provisions of that assault. So they're going to lay. So when the judge sees you, he's going to explain to you all exactly how this all has to work. Um, like there's things with weapons and all these other things that they're going to explain to you. What the officer is trying to explain is just kind of generally what they'll do is kind of make sure that you two are apart. Um, and typically the way that works is the person before the judge is typically the one that they say, you're going to have to go and, and find someplace else to stay until they can get it worked out. Now, again, that comes down to uh, emergency PFAs and things like that as well. What is um, emergency PFA? An emergency PFA is basically if somebody feels that they're in danger, they can apply for immediate relief uh, to have that person stay away from them until they can get before a judge, uh, which would usually be on the next business day, and then they would be able to get a full uh, PFA or to get an actual PFA after a judge rules on that. But this is so, my home. Like, that's the problem. Like, this is my home. Why don't he move So out? he, here's, an, in, in the... He lives here. You've allowed, when somebody when somebody establishes residency, he's lived here for how long? His whole life, pretty much. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, if if that person, whether it be a, a family member or a friend or whoever, roommate, if they um, if you want them to move out and they're not willing to move out, you have to file for an eviction. So you have to go through the legal process through the courts to get them evicted. So he has a right to stay here, um, ultimately, in, until he's evicted or he offers to leave on his own. Then the officer asks her to get her shoes so they can take her into custody. As she's getting ready to leave, Sultana is seen hugging her younger children goodbye, then later cuffed outside the back of the squad car. Here, hang on one sec. We have, we, we, have to, we have to handcuff you. So I'll try to stand here so your kids don't have to see anything. Yeah, well, thank you. Just go ahead and put your hands behind your back.
Is that good? Yep. Just hang tight so I can lock them so they don't get tight on you, okay? Just check and make sure they hold one second. Just make sure that you didn't, you know, they're red. Okay. The body cam ends shortly after with the officers informing Sultana's older children their mom is being taken to the police department. Back at Wednesday City Council meeting, the police department chief slammed Sultana for making the allegations of political corruption and racism. And hopefully uh, after watching the video um, again that you, you see that we did handle this call the best that we were able to in this situation. So again, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come and speak to that. Following the video, the mayor said that the police department acted with compassion and concern, and he couldn't find any fault in the department's actions, adding the criticism was unfounded. While Sultana didn't directly respond to the body cam video during the meeting, she sent a statement to a local news outlet saying in part the mention of the body cam footage was inappropriate and deeply hurtful to her family. Last week, the councilwoman reportedly was approved for a program that, if completed, will expunge her record. In that statement, Sultana added that the unblurred face of her daughter and the mention of her son's name was shown in the video and both were a breach of privacy. She said showing the body cam was unprofessional and didn't disprove any political motivations, but simply confirmed the incident occurred, which she never denied. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.